Welcome to Coleman Report Live. I'm Bob Coleman, and we're talking Main Street and the small business lenders who help it grow. Lance Sexton, thank you for joining us. Katie Roach, thank you for joining us. Uh, Pre-election event. <laughs> uh, what is it? I read, read the paper, what, 55% of the people are stressed out over the election? Don't be stressed out. We're, we're going to be okay, right, Lance? No. <laughs> There have been a number of presidents that have been elected in my lifetime that maybe I didn't agree with, and maybe I thought things were going to be bad after the election. And guess what, guys? I'm still here and You're still, still kicking. So, um, hey, um, we're starting to uh, get some nice feedback on our. That's actually 2021 hospitality financing. Yeah, we're doing it in 2020, but we're talking about. Uh, the prognosis for 2021, Lance. I love putting this one together. This is my webinar, and Lance is the color commentator, where he uh, corrects me where I am wrong. And so you you have a lot of input, don't you, Lance? Well, Bob, I, I I love this program. It's very important to SBA lenders, and I have been watching Sunday night football to get my color commentary in line. I love it. I love it. Very good. Uh, anyway, that's next Thursday at 12 o'clock, excuse me, on November 12th at, well, I think 12 o'clock Lance's time. I don't know, 2 o'clock uh, yeah. Eastern. Well, I was I was right for some time. So what we've decided to do with Katie is she's updating this PPP loan forgiveness guide every week. And uh, Katie, and what we'll do is we'll simply add to the PDF. So we'll do that. For those of you who have ordered it, you will automatically receive it. Katie, we're going to try to release it, what, every Friday updates? Is that your plan? Yeah, I, I hope that, you know, obviously there are going to be some weeks we're not going to hear too much, but there are weeks uh, where we get a lot of information and it'd be great for people to get that update as quickly as possible. So I'm going to try to get everything out by Friday so everybody can have a brand new PDF ready uh, and go over the updates and everything that's changed th throughout that week. Right. Let's go to the poll questions. I want to talk about Main Street Lending Program today and do a review on this slants uh, we lowered we you and i <laughs> and katie got yeah. together we lowered it we are uh, we are the treasury uh we went from 250 to 100 does this make this more attractive to you i look forward to seeing what the response is i think people are still a little fatigued so all right, we're up to 25%. I, that's that's the highest I've ever seen for a response. Um, I think, Katie, correct my math, but I think we were in the 10 to 12% range before. So that's, that's I think that's positive. Um, what is the total capacity of the Main Street Lending Program? How much has been authorized by Congress and signed by the President? Lance, do you know? I don't know the answer, Bob. I would have chimed in there, but I'm not sure what the answer is. Katie? Well, chime in. Take a guess. Take a guess. I'm going to put you on the I'm spot. Gonna guess two, I'm going to guess uh, 250 to 500. Uh, not bad. The, 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 the answer is $600 billion. The reason why we put the $5 billion to date, they've only used $3.7 billion. So there is wow. a lot of capacity. There's a lot of movement. Um, I'm not that much of an expert on it. I don't know if Katie's been following it. Uh, it's Treasury put up $75 million for that. There are issues that we have on it, at, but um, I do know that it is bipartisan, Katie, on getting more lenders involved with this program, correct? Right. I mean, I was just reading last week that there are very few lenders that are really participating in this, and there are some states where they're really only – maybe one lender who's really uh, doing it. So there is there's a lot of opportunity if lenders feel comfortable doing this. And also, I mean, I'm hearing a lot of borrowers who are interested, but not a lot of lenders out there who are doing it. Well, it's difficult. Yeah. One of the, um, there's a moving target on eligibility. One of them is that you need to have a decrease in revenues which makes it difficult, especially I think uh, where they're floating around a 95% guarantee. So, Lance, you have a 5% guarantee, but uh, 
to a company with declining revenues that is not necessarily a recipe for success. And I think everybody's a little, you know, we went through the PPP rodeo and, <laughs> and you know, you know what's great, Bob, is uh, being a good SBA citizen means we're all jumping back into doing regular SBA lending now. Reserve that website. You know, Bob, I closed two loans last week, which uh, very excited, normal SBA loans, and I think most SBA participant lenders are very happy to be doing regular SBA lending. Main Street Lending Program is aimed at companies with less than 15,000 employees. True or false? In other words, we're saying that any, any company more than 15,000 is ineligible for this program. And that is true. That is true. This is a huge program. This is a middle market program. Um, so that's why I think in terms of traditional SBA lenders, they're a little leery of that because it's uh, outside of their normal comfort zone, Lance. But if they make these changes, I think it's a product that the lenders should not necessarily embrace, but to investigate further. Yeah, take a look at it, see if it's a fit for your uh, – and these are not necessarily small businesses. They're medium – what I call a medium-sized business. It's yeah, not I, your I Walmart. Yeah. It's not your Walmart, your Amazon, but it's in between normal SBA lending and corporate. Uh, what is the maximum sales amount for Main Street Lending Program loans? I guess we we worded this is is it limited to one billion dollars or less in revenues? It's revenues. That is false. You can go up to five billion in revenues, Lance. That is true, Bob. And, and to, again, to me, that's a pretty decent sized company. Uh, but uh, with that size company, you're going to have to underwrite it properly according to Main Street Lending Program guides. Uh, you know, I think there's there's some ri there's some risk there that most SBA lenders, you know, they're accustomed to working at, at smaller levels of risk. Katie, they put out an FAQ, anything new in that? I mean, where are we in this process? We do expect more guidance to drop, correct? Uh, they did put out an FAQ. The FAQ is specifically with the uh, PPP loans and how they affect the Main Street Lending Program. They also put out uh, separate fact sheets for each of the Main Street Loan, uh, loan Programs, uh, you know, different types of programs. So uh, you can go through those and check. They did break it down pretty simply on, you know, what type of loan it is and how much uh, the maximum and minimum are. And uh, things like that. So it, it does help if you're kind of confused about that. And a critical question for the borrower, can these loans be forgiven? Very good. Katie, we have a smart crowd. Yeah, they cannot. Yeah, they cannot. Uh, let's go. So let's just sort of recap where we are today, knowing there's going to be more out there. I wanted to give everyone a taste of this program to start thinking about it. Um, this is what's come up there. Go ahead, Katie. I'll let you explain the slide. Okay. So this is just uh, basically summarizing what we just went over. So, uh, of course, they reduced the... Um, both for for-profit and non-profit borrowers, the minimum loan size. And that's uh, from 250,000 to 100,000, with the exception of, I believe it's, I, I don't want to be wrong, it might be the new Main Street Loan Program. There's one of the, the programs that is a little bit higher still. So it's only uh, three of the programs, all four. And right um, now the maximum loan amount is 10 million, correct? The maximum for, um, let me see. No, it depends on the program. So the maximum is going to be anywhere between 35 
uh, million and 300 million, depending on which program it is within this. Okay. Uh, but I, I think the ones we're looking at are also, there's another one that's 10 million and then now they're saying that PPP loan can be excluded from that. And as we said, we've only done 400 loans for 3.7 million. So we're going to follow this. Hey, this came out on Friday, that new questionnaires for loans to, excuse yeah, $2 million and above on forgiveness apps. Katie, I know you've been following this. This is we we do have an advance notice on that. It is in the dashboard if you want to see it. But it, and SBA did it in a press release, but we still ha don't have it posted on the websites. My concern on the on what we uh, linked is there was an expiration date on the forms. There's one the exact form, just once for profit, once for nonprofit, of an expiration of 10:31. So we've chosen to, uh, we want everyone to know about it, but and it is available on that, but we're sort of slow playing this until we have it up on the websites, Katie. Right. That should also be coming through the forgiveness portal for anybody who does have a loan over $2 million. You'll probably get a message through there. Uh, when this does hit, you'll probably get that questionnaire sent directly to you. And uh, how many loans are we talking about, Katie? That's only going to be about uh, almost 29,000 loans, uh, which is really only 0.6 all the loans through the uh, PPP program. So it's not a significant amount, uh, but that is it is something to be aware of if you did a, a loan over $2 million, just to be on the lookout for these. Uh, there's a fairly quick turnaround rate, I think, uh, the borrower has about 10 business days to fill it out, and then the lender has to go. Uh, from what it sounds like, the lender is going to have to retype in all of the answers from the borrower. So hopefully that's uh, not too complicated and time-consuming. Lance, what are you doing with this questionnaire? I haven't seen it yet, Bob, but I know what the genesis of it is. Uh, the larger PPP loans, what they're trying to do is make a determination if they truly, you know, needed and qualified for the PPP loan. There are some borrower certifications in the PPP loan process where they're stating that they needed the PPP loan to continue to keep employees on staff and to continue to meet payroll. And I think SBA is just looking at it saying, hey, you know, there's a likelihood that some of the borrowers in excess of $2 million did not necessarily need the money. Lance, how much um, more paperwork is involved from the lender responsibility than a loan less than $50,000? What you have an insight of that and um, what the lender should budget in terms of someone going through all this mess? Well, I think it's going to be more complex by virtue of the size of, of it. The payroll reports, the 941s are going to be more complex. Uh, you know, the form used for forgiveness, the 3508, has a lot more calculation activity on the part of the borrower that will require certainly a good faith review on the part of the lender. So uh, it's probably, compared to the 3508S, Bob, it's probably three to five times more work on the part of the participant. This is the form that still says it only takes eight minutes to complete Lance, is that? Uh... Yeah, that's the one way back I kept, you know, Treasury Secretary Mnuchin said that it took very little time to complete, and I kept issuing a challenge to have him come on the show and do the form in that designated time period. I don't think he can. We've yet, we've yet to hear from them. Joel <laughs> says we had a lot of PPP forgiveness apps approved over the weekend by SBA. Can we expect SBA to be quicker with decisions on forgiveness apps now? Have you heard any additional information on this? Uh, I did talk to somebody I know in SBA, and, and they're doing the best they can right now with getting quick decisions out on these forgiveness applications. But one of the things that you have to have in the back of your mind, there's been a very small number of forgiveness applications submitted. So that right now it's manageable in terms of decision-making. Uh, just wait till the floodgates open and 
the huge number of forgiveness applications to land, the timing. How many PP loans did we do, Lance? Uh, so, I'm, I, Katie's going to have to help. Several million. Five million. Uh, yeah, five my, million. My stats. <laughs> so, so, so the question now is how many forgiveness apps have been submitted? Uh, very small percentage of the total PPP loans that were done. So there, at some point, there's going to be a huge flood of forgiveness requests. Very good. Anyway, we wanted to bring you up to date on where we are on those two programs. Obviously, uh, PPP 2.0 will not have, I can say this confidently, PPP 2.0 will not happen before the election. <laughs> no. I'm moving off my July 3rd date, so <laughs> uh, that's important. Uh, Lance and I are going to do the hospitality webinar, and please set aside some time for the secondary market. It will be virtual this year. It's not going to be all day. It'll be two hours. Uh, hopefully, we'll get SBA's participation in that as well. Finally, uh, don't forget our compensation reports and uh, if you're doing your budget for next year. Hey, we appreciate your time. We know you're busy. We know you have a lot of, lot of work to do. Uh, Lance, Katie, and I truly appreciate the amount of time that you take out of your day to view this. We love your questions. We love uh, being called on the carpet. Uh, we try to be as accurate as possible, and sometimes uh, we uh, swing in a miss, and that's why we love it. That's right. <laughs> anyway, uh, thank you for joining us today for Come Report Live and for supporting America's Main Street, one entrepreneur at a time. Talk to you tomorrow. Have a great afternoon.